No beating around the bush on this one, as you can probably guess from the thumbnail. I've hit my limit with Battlefield 2042, and I'm not going to turn this into some profanity-laced rant where I just carry on and ramble for 20 minutes. But instead, I'm going to be providing some reasoning as to why I have hit the wall with this game. My name is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I think anybody that has been in constant contact with 2042 is, to some degree, in the same boat as I am. But before we dive into the meat of this video, I wanted to again thank you for all the support you've been showing me, my content, and my channel. In case you aren't yet a sub, please take a quick second to smash that big, beautiful subscribe button, and don't forget to ring the bell to receive all my future upload alerts. As you could probably tell from my last upload a few days ago when I posted that video on World War III, it felt really liberating and refreshing to be outside of the horror show that is 2042. To say that I have been disappointed with the launch of this Battlefield game would be the understatement of the century. And I believe that I have made that amply clear in my constant postings concerning this game, but I felt it necessary to give you a breakdown as to why I'm just calling it quits now with Battlefield 2042. First off, and just being really frank here, is the basic fact that I don't find this game fun to play. I could probably just stop the video right here, save you a bunch of time, go straight to the outro, but in all seriousness, I just don't find it interesting. To the point that when I do sit down at my PC and I press the power button, I take a look at the desktop, and I want to pick any other title I have installed to play except for 2042. And I've read comments from viewers that have stated that playing this game has literally zapped all desire to play games out of their daily routines. And to any of you that are out there that are at that point, your remedy is really simple. If the game is doing that to you, then stop. If you find yourself questioning why you were playing a game, as in, why am I wasting my time with this garbage, then you need to just move on. There are plenty of other titles out there that will re-engage and inspire you. It's just not this one. Hard-coded into that lack of fun has to be the poor design choices, and these really hit home for me being a franchise-long fan of the series. The decision to not include classes was really shocking and frankly extremely polarizing to someone that has been with Battlefield for the duration. It creates this lifeless shell of a Battlefield game where everyone's just running around looking the same, all using the same specialist, all using the same couple of strong meta setups. I mean, everyone can self-heal and there's just no hint or feeling of actual squad play. It all swirls together into this mosh pit of feeling like a Call of Duty game once you get to control points, with players running around like Rambo, out of cover, doing all the things you were taught never to do in a Battlefield game of the past. I'm going to lay some cold hard facts down in this video right now, but do you happen to know the reason for this type of gameplay? Do you happen to know what's promoted it? Here you go. Because there's no consequences for making stupid decisions in this game. And speaking of no consequences, the call-in system has completely broken the traditional flow of a Battlefield title. The ability to call in and call in and call in again, it just broken the older formula that I happen to love of infantry based gameplay with armor support and now it's shifted it over to a heavy dose of armor and air support all using the dumbasses on foot as easy kills. This in tandem with the abhorrent map design has created huge swaths of land that foot soldiers have to cross with no cover and no alternate routes for protection. And after 5-10 to 10 minutes of being run over by vehicles, deleted by air support, or just sniped from some person 3 miles away, PTFO grunts just walk away from the game. The fact that 2042 launched with and still maintains such a content light -like game is just baffling to me. The base game came out with so few weapons, I think we're still at the original 22? With others being locked away in Portal, but still, 22 weapons? And the vast majority of those are total garbage. And if you do equip them, you are artificially handicapping yourself before the round ever begins. The modes are not inspiring. All Out Warfare runs like ass, even on my top shelf PC. 128 player mass scale combat was what we were promised, but the performance of that game mode suffered so badly that they ended up adding a 64 player option just to make the game run a bit smoother. 
They didn't fix anything. They didn't handle their optimization issues. They just came up with a clever workaround by halving the players. Oh, and speaking of janky, mouse input is still broken, approaching now four months after launch. And when I did play 2042, my mouse felt like it was a second to two seconds behind my inputs. And it gets worse the more players enter the server. Now, I've said this before, but when you launch a shooty game and your shooting feels like shit, then you've got a real problem. And even with this basic premise, 2042 failed badly. Luckily, this never happened to me, but I read about PC players receiving permabans for the easy anti-cheat software incorrectly flagging their RGB software is, well, frankly not surprising, considering how things are actually going with this game. EA, of course, made another boneheaded decision to shut down the help forum as it had reached 163 pages of people trying to figure out what the hell they had done wrong. And speaking of EA and DICE, I really don't know where to begin with this. It's really hard to decipher where EA ends and DICE begins. What I would like to know is who greenlit this project and total restructuring and gutting of everything hardcore fans of the franchise had come to know and love about Battlefield. Why did this game launch in such an incomplete and poor technical state? I mean, we could go on with this subject for hours and still not have a fully fleshed out story. Now in terms of EA, I'm sure they're still taking in huge sums of money by fleecing gamers, especially with their misleading advertising for this game. Let's be honest here, we saw epic trailer after epic trailer depicting this mass scale battle all with dynamic weather, but what we really got was that cringy ass, what a time to be alive, gameplay and trailer. We thought we were getting the Exodus trailer, and instead we were sold something that resembles a comedy routine. EA and their marketing team truly lucked out that YouTube disabled downvotes because if that was still active, these cringe ass trailers would be blown right off the airwaves. Oh, and speaking of cringe, one thing that I never got over was hearing the specialists with their corny one-liners pre and post match. That may work out in Apex or Fortnite because the tone of those games is completely different than that of Battlefield. But who in the hell would actually say, don't be sad, that's just the way it works out sometimes after they lost tons of their brothers in arms and actually lived through a real life battle. Finally, and I felt this of great importance to mention this in my decisions to step away from Battlefield 2042, and it's my utter and complete lack of confidence in DICE. This DICE is not the DICE of old. When we as a community are discussing when an FPS game will get VoIP into scoreboard, that's not good. DICE delivered a game that was broken as hell, all while stopping support for Battlefield 5, ending Battlefront 2, canceling Battlefront 3, and delaying Need for Speed. How a legendary and billion dollar AAA studio could deliver this amount of garbage, all while diverting support from other games is just egregious. Within this past week, we received word that Season 1, albeit in a live service game, has been delayed until vague time frame incoming, early summer. Then just to slap our faces a little bit harder, all while pouring salt into our open wounds, we get a second announcement that the scoreboard has been delayed again until sometime in March. Now, if you had any doubts as to what is going on at DICE, if you have any remaining reservations that they're somehow going to pull off the resurrection to top all resurrections, just think that over again. They had to delay the installation of a scoreboard. And I still see people over on Twitter or even in my comment section saying, I love this game. It's the bestest Battlefield game I've ever played. And you know what? I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to throw around certain adjectives. And by the way, if you are enjoying 2042, I mean really enjoying it, then you know what? I'm happy for you. You got your money's worth and that's all you can really ask of your game purchases. I, in case you couldn't tell, am not happy with my purchase. And I would guess that I am in the vast majority of players that purchased this game only to find out it was nothing like what we were shown on the trailers. Based on the comments thrown out by Andrew Wilson, EA CEO, on last week's EA Investors Call, he doesn't really see this as an issue because DICE has a proven track record of launching broken games and then rebuilding them. And all this says to me is that EA hasn't learned a damn thing, and they will continue to not be interested in learning that lesson until it hits them directly in the wallets. 
my advice to anyone out there is if you ever see this video or any of my Battlefield 2042 videos, I want you to remember what happened here. Remember the terrible state this game launched in and remember that name, EA and DICE. Do not, under any circumstances, ever pre-order another game from this pairing. When you do, all you do is reward them for shady business models and crappy products at launch that, despite their public statements of dedication to the craft, will only slightly improve and then ultimately be canceled. I will continue to cover Battlefield 2042, you know, maybe in terms of when something drops for news or updates, but other than that, this game has completely broken me. Not my love for the franchise, because I can still boot up Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1 and find full servers at any time of day, but it has definitely killed off any faith I had in 2042, EA, or DICE. At this point, Season 1, whenever it launches, will need to be of biblical proportions to even have a shred of a chance at re-engaging the community. But honestly, if we're looking at delays for legacy features like VoIP, or I'm going to mention it again, a scoreboard, then just how incredible do you expect new content to be? So in the future, I do plan to continue my coverage of other gaming titles, basically anything shooter related. I showed off a bit of World War III a few days ago, and judging from the views, you guys seem to have liked and responded to that. I've seen comments telling me to try out Insurgency, Hell Let Loose, and there's a bunch of other titles you want me to try and squeeze in. I'm looking forward to Outriders getting their first expansion, World Slayer, sometime this year. And eventually, hopefully, The Division is expected to get new content, and I plan on covering that as well. But from this day forward, I am cutting any and all of my bonds with 2042. And you know what? Already, even while composing this script, I feel better about my decision. I encourage you all to leave me feedback about your personal experiences with Battlefield 2042 in the comments section below. Now, I can't always respond to every single comment, but trust me when I say that I do read them. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to receive all my future upload alerts. If you could also take another second to just rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget that you can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and are always welcome to join my community Discord server. Links to all my socials in the video description below. Thank you again for all the support as we are rapidly closing in on 100,000 subscribers. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off. Thank you.